Welcome uh, to this video. We're going to develop now the chapter 31, Open Academy Macroeconomics Basic Concepts, uh, exercises 6 to 9. Remember, this is a book of Gregory Mankiw, Principles of Economics. So, the sixth question says, what is happening to the U.S. real exchange rate in each of the following situations? Explain. A. The U.S. nominal exchange rate is unchanged, but prices rise faster in the United States than abroad. So remember that we have here the real exchange rate equation that we have here. The nominal exchange rate, here the domestic prices, and here in the denominator the external prices. So we have here an increase like higher here from the nominator. So we have here P is increasing higher, so we have here an increase here, and as a consequence, an increase in the real exchange rate. The US nominal exchange rate is unchanged, but prices rise faster abroad than in the United States. So here we have the, the foreign prices, they increase faster, so we have here an increase in the denominator, a larger than the other changes, so we have here a decrease in the real exchange rate. The US nominal exchange rate declines and prices are unchanged in the United States and abroad. So here we have a decrease in the nominal exchange rate, so as a consequence we have a decrease in the real exchange rate. D. The US nominal exchange rate declines and prices rise faster abroad than in the United States. So we have E, which is de de decreasing, and the uh, and, and, um, price rise faster abroad than in the United States. So we have here that this is an increase here and a decrease here, so both effects they are pushing the real exchange rate down. So as a consequence we have here a decrease in the real exchange rate. 7. A can of soda cost $1.25 in the United States and 25 pesos in Mexico. So here we have the soda in the US, the price is 1.25 and the price in Mexico is 25. So what is the peso dollar exchange rate measured in pesos per dollar if purchasing power parity holds? What is this purchasing power parity holds? It's basically that the costs everywhere, they are the same based on the law of unique price. You can review the chapter we analyzed that topic. So here we have the the power uh, power purchasing power party, uh, parity which is exactly equal to the nominal exchange rate is equal to the foreign prices over domestic prices. So we have 25 over 1.25 so we have that that we receive 20 Mexican pesos for one dollar. Then we have the soda and then it says if a monetary expansion cost uh, all prices in Mexico to double so that soda rose to 50 pesos what would happen to the peso dollar exchange rate? So we have now S uh, the soda this MX prime which is now 50 we compute exactly the same, so we we're going to put instead of 25, 50, so 50 over 1.25, so we have now 40 Mexican peso for dollar. 8. A case study in the chapter analyzed purchasing power party for several countries using the price of Big Macs. Here are data for a new for a few more countries. So here we have uh, five countries. So here we have the price of Mac, Big Mac in local prices. Here is the predicted change rate that we need to uh, compute and here is the actual change rate. So it is like um, what is the official? This is the official rate. So A. For each country compute the predicted exchange rate of the local currency per US dollar. Recall that the US price of Big Mac was 4.93. So imagine the situation for Chile. So we are going to find this nominal exchange, how many uh, Chilean pesos we are going to get from one dollar. So then we have here the P star which is the the prices abroad which is Chile 2100 and the price of Big Mac 4.93. So then 
the predicted change rate should be exactly 425.93. As you can see, you, you are going just to replicate this example, putting all the time as a denominator 4.93. And in the numerator, you're going to put the price of this Big Mac in local prices. So computing that 900 over this, you get this one, 75 over the price United States, 15.21. 13.5 over 4.93 we have 2.73 real and then the Canadian dollars we have 1.18 um, we have here uh, Canadian dollar per dollar so B according to purchasing power parity what is the predicted change rate between the Hungarian foreign and the Canadian dollar what is the actual exchange rate so here we know that we have 1.41 Canadian dollar for uh, Canadian dollar for for one dollar, and then we know that we have here Hungarian foreigns 293 per one dollar. So automatically, if you are computed how many uh, Hungarian foreigns I'm going to get from one Canadian dollar should be expressed in this way. The external prices should be the Hungary's prices and the local ones should be the Canadian ones. So here we have 293 over 1.41. So the predicted um, the predicted should be 207.8. What is the what is the real one? The real one is the one expressed here. So we have one uh, one 100 oh well this was the predicted one sorry it was the 293 over 1.41 and the predicted one should be exactly this one should be 100 uh 182.56 over 1.18 so the predicted one should be 144.71 hungarian foreigns per one canadian dollar C. How well does the theory of purchasing power party explain exchange rates? Well, as you can see here, all the results they are uh, they are between quotation marks kind of similar. Maybe this one is like the one, the Chilean one, which is the more maybe gap between the actual real, the actual exchange rate and the predicted exchange rate. Um, the other ones, well, you, we can see here that all here we have like lower, lower values. So obviously this is a good, good try, but it's not the the correct one. And as we saw during the chapter, this is because there are more different situation that affect this uh, this low unique price, which is not actually true even for this case, but it's a good estimate. Nine. Purchasing power party holds between the nations of Actenia and Wicknam, where the only commodity is spam. In 2015, a can of spam cost $4, so here we have the price of in Actenia $4, and 24 pesos in Wicknam. We are going to denominate as Mexican pesos just to make things easier. So it should be 24, the, price, the prices in Wicknam. What is the exchange rate between Actenian dollars and Wicknamian pesos? So here we have again the, 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 the exchange rate between those two. So we have here uh, 24 Mexican Mexican pesos or this case should be Wignam pesos over four dollars so we have six Wignam pesos over US dollar. Over the next twenty years inflation is expected to be three point five percent per year in Actenia and seven percent per year in Wignam. If this inflation comes to pass what will the price of Spain and the exchange rate in twenty thirty five? So hint, recall the rule of 70 from chapter 27. So we can take this one or we can use the formula of the present value. So we know now or the future value we have now the present value is 4 for the case of Actenia. So the final value should be present value times 1 plus i elevated to n which should be 2035 over minus 2015. So here we have 4 
and we have 3.5%. As a result, we have uh, the price in 2035 should be 796 and then the, for the other case for Wignam we exactly do the, do the same just we replace with 24 and with 7% and we end with 92.87 so then now the 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 exchange rate should be 11.66 which of the these two nations will likely to have a higher nominal interest rate why so Kenya we know that they have or they face 3.5% inflation and Wignam 7% so Wignam should have a nominal interest rate higher because it needs to compensate in some way this inflation which is larger. D. A friend of yours suggests a get-rich-quick scheme. Borrow from the nations with the lower nominal interest rate. Invest in the nation with the higher nominal interest rate. And profit from the interest rate differentials. Do you see any potential problem with this idea? Explain. So first, in 2015, you need to convert uh, money from Actenia to pesos from Wignam. In 2035, you need to get back to US dollars because you need to you need to consume, right? What, here is the issue. Now you will need well that's th at that time. It, 2035 you will need 11.66 mexican well wignam pesos instead of six so it should be more expensive when so then maybe you will earn because of the interest rate but then you will lose because of the exchange rate depreciation of that currency okay that's all i hope uh you you have clarified maybe the doubts or confirmed your exercises that you have done as always if you have any any comment maybe something that we can do better or another way please don't hesitate to comment and that's it thank you so much and see you next video bye bye